how do I survive limbo land with my wife, especially during this holiday season or vacation season? We're approaching the summertime here in the States, and often kids are home from school, of course. There's family vacations. And many men ask me, why does she want to still do family vacations? Or why does she want to hang out and still be in this limbo? She doesn't want intimacy. She still wants separation. But she wants more you know, family time together. How do I survive that? and grow my masculine self-confidence all along the way. And to me, there's three pieces to this. How much hanging out is really healthy. So the volume of hanging out, how much time that you don't want to slip back into nice guy habits of covert contracts, expecting things from her, and all of these old ways that you're trying to break away from or practice differently. And number three, keep growing your masculine depth even on vacation. And, and how do you do that? I'm going to unfold that quickly today. And we'll talk about you guys and your questions around this. So we're here in our man-to-man -man call because we want to live a life of freedom as men. We want to know our value. We want to know who we are and our boundaries. And that helps us live with more freedom when we're directed in that way, to be confident no matter what, and to make the most important promises to yourself. Emerson, one of his quotes here says, the only person you are destined to become is the person you decide to be. And to me, that's incredibly empowering that I can decide to turn my shoulders a particular direction to strive towards something, to learn, to grow my wisdom, to practice. And that can affect my life. I do have at least some control, at least some influence on the direction of who I can become. And for me as a man and for the men that I work with and you guys here, I'm sure that's powerful for you, the feeling of freedom. And who can I become? That's a huge piece of this work. So within this limbo land, how do I survive this during more vacation time? And how do I also grow self-reliance? This hanging out is one of the most painful parts for most men. And it, and I'm curious, when you're hanging out with her and hanging out with the family, do you feel like you're still growing as a man? Do you feel like you're still stepping up the staircase towards something that you want? You have a goal for your own self, whether it's in career or in the gym or in your knowledge. Do you have a goal? It's not just trying to fix the marriage or you're not just listless and purpose and passionless throughout this time, because that's going to work against you. It's going to fuel your monkey mind. And also she'll see you without passion within your heart and within your, your life. And that's not going to help what you're wanting either. So it won't help you and it won't help her if you have nothing going on. So do you have something going on for yourself that you're growing? What kind of hanging out are you doing? How much intimacy is happening? Are the kids around? So that's a question I would ask a man if we were having a one-on-one -on -one call. And are you having an emotional hangover, let's say, after you see her? If you see her and then you're thrown off of your feet, you're thrown off for the next three days, five days, or a full week, maybe you're spending too much time around her. Maybe you're expecting too much or you're wanting her to have the same set of values that you do, which was my old way of being, was I assumed that she was going to have the same set of values as me. Because all along the way in the relationship, she we had worked on things together, we had come to resolutions we had, had agreements, so to speak, logical agreements. And then when things went off the rails, I was shocked. It was almost this sort of righteous indignation that she might have a different opinion or a different set of values that maybe she was stuffing down for years, or I, I wasn't aware of, or I wasn't aware of a trauma that she had in the past, or maybe she wasn't even aware of it. It's coming out now. And I feel this attack from this uncertainty or this lack of control, and I take it out on the situation. Hey, that was my unhealthy go-to was to kind of punish the situation because of my own insecurity, unknown insecurity, let's say, or my desire for control. So within these three forms here, it's incredibly painful, of course. So how much hanging out is healthy? I don't want to slip back into habits. And a lot of that is I want to keep growing. I want to keep growing within my own self through this time, through summer that we're approaching here or through holidays that you may be approaching or just whatever phase you're in within this separation or, or growth that you're facing. So let me ask you men here, and I'll, I'll start with Chris because I see you first. So Chris, let me ask you, what does masculine self-confidence mean to you right now? And where would be maybe a win and a challenge for you around growing your own self-confidence or your self-reliance, it says here on this page? Growing your masculine self-reliance. What's a win or what's a challenge around that for you right now, Chris? Yeah, please. Uh, sure. Good to see everybody. What yeah. that means to me. I think it's having faith and trust in myself to kind of be able to face the day and make the most of it. And also show up as the best version of myself possible 
in any situation. And if it doesn't go the way that I necessarily want it to go, being able to ground myself as soon as possible afterwards and still enjoy as much of every day as I can. I think that's kind of the way I would summarize it. A win around that, I would say, for example, something that I've shared obviously with you personally, gone through kind of a little bit of an up and down streak here with my wife in the last couple of weeks. We've been separated for going on three months now since I moved out. And I would say a very direct win from this is, you know, I woke up today and kind of had a less than ideal interaction with her last night and found myself kind of overthinking it and being very stressed about it this morning. And then throughout the day, I've just kind of been able to kind of get over that and ground myself again and kind of have a conversation with myself about what really matters, thinking about the progress I've made over the last year as a person, as a man, and how I've approached everything with the relationship and knowing that in my core. So that's a win. Uh, A challenge I would say is just continuing to A, grow in the way that you've discussed and mentioned here, and just ensuring that I don't fall into a bit of complacency, thinking that just because I've been doing this for a while that I've learned all that I need to know or that I can't actively in the present moment be continuing to work on that and see ways in which I can grow. And also just navigating this current, more dynamic phase of the relationship where we're still separated, but she's kind of poking her head in and out, if you will. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Say, say more about that. I mean, men are definitely interested. Men on this call have asked me, are there any success stories? Like, what does it look like if she actually does start to turn around or show interest again? And so talk a little bit about that, please. Sure. I would say I wouldn't define it as a testimonial success story Not defined yet, no, in that yeah. way quite <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yet. However, there has definitely been some turning of the shoulders from her end uh, just in the last couple of weeks. There's been kind of a, a trickling of breadcrumbs along the way where uh, I just started to notice little things where she would be reaching out a lot more, bringing up things a lot more outside of just our daughter, which I thought was kind of interesting. And then she started inviting me to spend a little bit of one-on-one time a couple weeks ago um, after having family dinner, which was the first one-on-one time that we've had in a really long time, like well over six months, which went really well. And her, her whole demeanor and energy recently over the last month or so has been a lot less antagonistic, a lot less closed off and masculine shielded. And, uh, that's been really interesting to observe. And then she actually had invited me to go on a trip to the beach with our daughter. So perfect for this call on this particular topic. And that was a day spent with our daughter. However, throughout the day, there was more opening, more emotional sharing, more relating on things that we haven't talked about or that she's been willing to talk about for, I don't know, multiple years, it seems like at this point. Yeah. And, you know, the, Things that were said that um, from her end were pretty surprising from a a way more relationship dynamic type of level. And I was leaning into a little bit of sexual sexual innuendos and just making my intentions known that I'm not just going to be her friend in that scenario. And she was receptive to it. She didn't close off from that. And then that night, we actually spent a little bit more one-on-one time together. And we had the first kiss that we've had since February and probably the the best kiss that we've had again in like two years or so. And so that was kind of the culmination of like the short-term success uh, checkpoint, if you will. Um, And then, like I said, you know, she's kind of, it's more just a a gut feeling where I can feel that she's retracted her energy a little bit. Something that we talked about a little bit earlier today on the call was that it seems like, to me, it almost feels like what Cynthia had said, which is that she kind of scared herself into how much she was opening and how easily she was able to kind of fall into that state of the relationship again. That's what it feels like. However, still the fact that she even did that felt like a pretty, pretty big win, pretty big moment of transition. Yeah, absolutely. And it shows a lot about your work and the space in between the two of you, right? And of course, every story is different, but so within masculine self-reliance, how did this maybe throw you off your center a bit? What, why is it more challenging now? now? <laughs> I mean, to be quite frank with you, I think 
although I still was open to the idea of the relationship working out, there had just been such a long streak of like no real reason to have hope that it would work out that I was kind of like already accepting that it was probably not going to work out while still obviously wanting that I was settling into that mentality and what that felt like to just be like, okay, you know, this is the situation now and I will be great if it could work out, but it just doesn't feel like it will. So initially I didn't think that it would really throw me off that much, even when it started to go really well. Uh, however, I think that pretty much it's, it's like a good, like a good break check of yes, I've grown a lot. However, her just even subtly kind of pulling back the energy a little bit just brought me right back to that like oh no like why is she turning away now kind of just throwing me off my center a little bit so that's that's definitely something that I felt and in, in challenged by because it feels like there's that possibility now where it really can work out and now even though I'm still doing my best to think of it with a detached mindset from the outcome and not trying to press the issue and not trying to control the situation it just feels a lot more real now. So that creates a certain internal pressure within me that makes it hard to not want it more and not be sure. driven to see it work out. Sure. It, it almost feels like it's a, the perfect amount of practice for you to feel that desire again, to feel that pull toward her and to be able to, to check yourself, to check your energy, check your process, your approach, you know, being lover energy, being masculine. It sounds like all like that. Does she normally... Exactly. Has she normally in the past gone back into say work mode and such her retraction? I'm wondering, is it simply her going back into daily life mode? Would you say? I think that could be part of it. Again, that's why I said it feels like I'm kind of overthinking a little bit. Like there's, it's probably somewhere in the middle, right? Like I would say, yes, she probably scared herself a little bit into how much she was opening. And yet also, I think that she ultimately has her own things going on with work and life and that can easily pull her out of that more feminine energy. I think maybe I'm more attuned to that because right. it's it's such a coming out of left field type of a situation that I'm hyper aware of how she's being and how she's acting towards me now. Whereas before it was a little bit more, I don't want to say autopilot, but less less like, oh, this is something to really focus on now. Uh, so that's, that's an interesting thought. I appreciate you bringing that up. Yeah, that's, that's a good question. I definitely... I don't think that that plays into it, but yeah, it's, it, you're right. It is the ultimate practice grounds. And that's why I'm glad that, you know, today, like this morning, I was all kinds of messed up mentally just because, and it's not like anything even substantially happened last night that would really say that I should feel that way. It was just kind of like a part of me was just already, I could feel myself kind of getting pulled into that future reality of what it could be. Right. And then like a, a small thing threw me off just a little bit. And I found myself kind of like mentally spir mentally spiraling and kind of catastrophizing it not working out. But then throughout the day, I, you know, I, I worked and then also just allowed myself to focus on all these things that I mentioned already, which is just knowing the truth of the situation, no matter what, I'm going to be all right. You know, it can feel stressful right now because of the situation. However, I know that at the end of the day, what we've learned here when it comes to whether it works out with the person you're with or not, this whole this whole experience will be worth having because the learning that comes from it, if it does work out, will have been so worth it. And the learning that comes from it, from it if it doesn't work out, will ultimately be worth it. So yeah. reminding myself that talking to myself in that way internally throughout the day today and spurts when I could is kind of the, the spark of getting back to at least near center. Still, still working on it, of course. Yeah, yeah, well said, well said. And now that you're aware, and I had to learn this too, that the masculine and feminine energy in this in the room or in the exchange when she does open herself and surrender to the moment and be more feminine now you're so aware of it and it's so different than the vibe that's been mm -hmm. recently that when it goes away it's like oh i want i want that um piece of pumpkin pie again <laughs> like i want i want that scoop of ice cream again that she's shown me and i haven't seen for so long but yeah it's a yeah. fantastic awareness you have chris good stuff that's a perfect analogy it's also <laughs> Any, anytime i can slip pumpkin pie in an analogy i'm gonna do it thanks for starting yeah. us off chris. Excuse you. yeah hans, come in. thanks chris hans come in and talk about what it was like when she like you said in the chat here when your wife would open and then shut and then open and then shut 
talk about that challenge that you know you faced and so many guys are facing well i mean i, I can relate to his story in that my wife would come back a little bit and then we're, we're tracked and we were having great times and it, you know uh how much how much time is too much hanging out is too much i mean i i accepted far too little for far too long just uh you know inviting her into things and and constantly getting no i just want to watch tv with you and stuff like that and it's like i you know that's on me but you know everything's a learning experience i'm gonna i'm gonna find the lesson in everything um sure but yeah we we did come back we came back big time from uh the brink of divorce and my story is gonna be particular to her childhood trauma every time she engaged it she pulled away from me like i was this big threat but you know uh everyone's got their their demons that they're facing so i'm sure my story still relates to chris's tangentially in some way but um yeah i'd, I'd get excited because i had this mindset that i'm going to fix all these problems and all these efforts that i'm doing this big this big gaussian effort was going to turn out with this this great romance but it did turn out just in a different way that i thought you know um i really have a lot of purpose right now a lot of uh reflection and a lot of personal strength and growth that came out of it it just didn't turn out with my wife right so or who knows whatever but yeah she would come back and i think you know this is a pathway we're gonna we're gonna bloom this thing we're gonna have this this uh big resurgence and then she'd pull away and then we'd have uh it come back again and she'd pull away and we got back to uh you know i love yous and sex and then she started a therapy session that she just like, don't look at me. You're looking at me with hungry eyes. Don't touch me. Don't uh, flirt. Don't whatever. And what can you do with that? Like, especially when any sort of irritation in your face turns into like, uh, how dare you? Like, you know, yeah. so it was like, uh, you know, it, it, you know, I did the best I could. Uh, and I learned and grew through it. I read more books. I, I uh, enrolled in the master's program. I, you know, I'm, I'm full steam ahead of my life. Uh, if she needs to withdraw, she withdraws. And she declared that she wanted to divorce again. And I said, you know, I wouldn't separate her suit. She moved out. So it's like, you know, uh, this is going to turn out in the long run. It's it it has its painful moments. And uh, you know, I'm I'm as positive as I've ever been about it. It's just, you know, it's a shame as far as you know her, uh my relationship with my wife goes. But I remember that excitement. She's back, we're kissing again, we're we're flirting again. You know, and then it just gets pulled out without any incident. Like it wasn't like I did something offensive or um, or overly aggressive. It was just like she felt threatened and had to pull away. And it was like, okay, you know, you get your space. Um, yeah. So I, again, it's it's going to be a different backstory. Uh, hopefully, a different uh, outcome. But uh, yeah, I remember those feelings of of coming back, blooming, and then nothing. <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, well, I I know, and the men who know you know that you've been on a tremendous path, and like how studious you've been, Hans, and, and incredible stuff, and how supportive you are with other guys. Is is there anything right now you're having a challenge with around your own self reliance, around this question of masculine self reliance? Do you have a, any challenges around that right now for you? Uh, you know, just connection. That's never really been my thing. I mean, I was connecting really well with my wife for our, our most of our 22 years together. Um, but really, I've never really let anybody else in. Uh, I've had friendships and I'd have tons of parties and things like that, but it's never been like these close bonds with people. And so, yeah, I get in these moments where I feel really kind of isolated sometimes, but I'm full steam ahead on so many different projects. That I'm excited about those at the same time. I'm lamenting not having time for people. So it's, it's like a, it's a catch 22. Uh, <laughs> but, um, you know, I, I, again, I, it's, it's wherever you put in your intention. So if my intention right now is building uh, a tutoring gig, uh, online um, asynchronous courses, this charity contest that I want to do, you know, right, yeah, I, I have starved out that portion for having a lot of free time for, for friendships and, and adventure and stuff like that. And, and I just got to recognize that, you know, whatever's most important to me, I've got to make time for. So I, I can't complain. It's just, it gets to me sometimes. So that that's where my masculine, um, I don't know, self-confidence wanes just a little bit, but, uh, I mean, I'm excited about how things are going. In fact, I've got a meeting after this meeting to, uh, meet with somebody to do more of a proper launch for those courses. And, um, 
I've been contacting people again about instead of going solo uh, on that um, charity contest thing, I've, I've actually assembled a committee of people to kind of help me through the rigmarole of it because I've got to contact like Maryland lawyers for the arts to get the legal part of it right. I've got to contact um, uh, Baltimore or, uh, promotion of the arts. They're going to put up a, a $10,000 grant, I think. I hope. I mean, I'll, I'll see it when I get the check. But um, and then I've got uh, uh, somebody who's agreed to do the contest with me for the first run. And I've got somebody setting up a website for me. Like I'm getting things going. It doesn't, yeah. it's not outward yet, but it's, it's, right. it's taking the time out to do the things that I need to do. So um, yeah, I'm really excited about that. And it's just like, you can't have it all. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fair for sure. Absolutely. Thanks Hans. Good to see you, man. Appreciate it. Yeah. Joe, come on in. Um, I guess I was just going to say like archetype, you know, like the archetypes of this, uh, Inter these kind of interactions are so interesting to me because, you know, I've experienced what Chris and Hans are talking about many, 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 many times, right? In small ways and big ways. But, uh, you know, like the, the amount that I want the relationship, that feels feminine to me, um, like my feminine side. And, you know, like the anxiety when the rug is pulled out on you, it gets pretty high. And I think you know, for most guys, we kind of just fall into that yeah. feminine, like wanting the relationship, uh, which makes a lot of sense. But in all reality, like, I don't know what I feel about this attachment to the relationship that I, that I've kind of had for what, you know, going on almost three years now, just, and not feeling masculine enough. And, and then her also not taking the feminine pull as she said that, you know, she's even like, you know, got enough sensitivity to realize that there is a, a pull that she could take, but she doesn't want to. So it's just so interesting. Like, it's almost like the mo more I could focus on my mission and purpose, the more that would create the vacuum. And yet, like, relationships are important to me. So I, I, mean, I don't know where this, this, this all falls. That one line in Open Her about, you know, it's her responsibility, the relationship something about that i there was a word she used but uh, like yeah. that's not the case in our case right so, so how do you not feel that the relationship's your responsibility when somebody's you know moving out like you, you basically just gotta drop the rope immediately would be the ideal but it's not realistic right yeah that's a great point joe the way i look at it is that i'm wanting to facilitate and lead and cultivate what we're growing together where the relationship itself is going and what we're going to experience like you you and i have talked where you want to euphemistically explore antarctica with her right that's this representation of i want to explore a new land and a new place we haven't been before and feel that excitement uh, so I, i'm wondering if it's the feeling of pain that that's not evolving that she's not coming along with you in that shared journey together not and again we've talked a lot joe right not so much the quote, attachment to the relationship itself, like the label or the safety of the relationship, but lamenting being sad about the shared journey that you're not having together that you know, at least academically and intellectually, that the two of you could have, but she's not either wanting or able right now to play that partner for you. So it's sad. That loss of the adventure is certainly sad. How's that feel, Joe? Yeah, please unmute yourself. Come back in. Uh, I think there's some truth in that, for sure. At the same time, I think there is this sort of attachment to the inside of me that, you know, doesn't want to lose it. But, like, if I was truly focused on my mission and purpose, and it was great enough in me, it wouldn't, it wouldn't matter as much. None of us are 100% the masculine archetype that cares nothing about relationship. I've never met a man like that. That cares nothing about relationship. There's men that are very masculine, like, that care very little, but I've not yet ever met a man that doesn't care at all. I'm like a psychopath or something like this. I've, not that I'm aware of, at least not men that, men that come to this work aren't attracted to this work if they don't care at all about relationship. And at the same time, there's no woman that's 100% the feminine archetype. And especially in today's culture, you know, women have so many messages of they have to succeed financially, they shouldn't need a man, 
and they have all these masculine demands on them that it's especially hard for a woman who is feminine. And then she feels collapsed under that pressure, so to speak. And I don't mean to simplify this, Joe, of course, we, you know, I know you and many of us know the journey that you're on too. But um, yeah, I, I, I care about relationship. I want relationship. This is something and I want sex as well. And I want exploration of intimacy as well. Doesn't mean I'm going to leave a woman in after one month of no sex, so to speak. But that is important to me. It's something I do want to cultivate. And it's not something I'm just going to give up on necessarily. So I do care about relationship. But our work here is to be able to, of course, ground ourselves in this self-reliance and bring our stuff to the men so that we're not inadvertently dumping that on her. We're not making her responsible for that part of our own selves. And I know you know that, Joe, but um, I want to say that for, for everyone's sake and for to make that to make that point. Anything else there, Joe, for you, please? Yeah. I, I just think it's so it's so interesting that 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 pull, you know, that interplay, that dance, and like in in a really, I feel like in a re- really functioning. I mean, I don't know. Even looking back at you and Cynthia, she always did the the sex capade spot, right? I mean, it's it's kind of like she's taking a big chunk of the relationship as her and owning it almost but not in the same masculine way but like it matters so much but in these cases they just left that so it's so that's so masculine right i mean or or fear or something so it's just so interesting like the contrast of what would look healthier right yeah yeah that's well said thanks joe good to see you anthony come on in anthony what would you say is a, a win and a challenge around growing your masculine self-reliance recently good to see you by the way good to see you too (laughs) yeah um well everything's really new for me um it's only been like a month of one month almost so it's very fresh so i'm still kind of diving into everything kind of finding myself and finding that masculinity inside of me um but right now i'm focusing for my masculine self is just kind of that self-confidence putting myself out there um I've always seen myself as a shy person. So now I'm kind of been meeting people, um, girls and guys, um, just anybody I can talk to. And that really helps me build that self-confidence and makes me feel kind of more masculine and more empowered within myself. And so, so far, that's kind of just really what I've been focusing on. <laughs> yeah, nice. Good. So what's what's been a challenge, would you say, within that self-reliance? I mean, it's kind of the opposite of who I was. Um, I'm wasn't a person that really likes to talk to people. I usually wait for people to talk to me. And I think that kind of had problems, caused problems in my relationship was because I didn't have like a bunch of friends that I could rely on. Um, I didn't have, you know, like a support system outside of my household. And so I, I, not to say that she was right in everything, but I do agree that I did need to kind of step up that masculine part of me. And so that in and of itself has just been really difficult, you know, putting myself out there, trying to fight my inner demons, my little boy inside of me telling me to kind of hide away, you know, that's really, really been difficult. And also just kind of finding out who I really am um, as a man, you know, I kind of, you know, you have your own self-perception on who you think you are, and it's not always accurate, especially if like not to say I have low self-esteem, but, you know, again, back to that shy person, you know, I think that I'm that way. And, you know, I'm kind of realizing it was more of a mask that I was putting it on um, since I was a kid, just being like, oh, this is who I am. But I've come to realize um, I've been able to put myself out there and it's actually a lot of fun. And it's actually pretty easy sometimes, as long as I kind of just let loose, breathe, and my masculinity can come out. Yeah, nice, man. It, it makes me think of the, the saying, just just be yourself. Well, what if the self that I'm being needs needs more experience in the world, needs more exposure to women or to men's groups or to this kind of work or books, right? And it just doesn't serve to try to be yourself, but it's who do you want to be? That's, that's the Emerson quote that I showed earlier, right? It's, I can decide. The only person you're destined to become is the person you decide to be. And while that might sound Pollyanna to some, I like to think that I do have influence over who I am, my life, like the way I move in the world. And it sounds like you're experiencing more of that. You get to decide, you get to go experience that. Yeah, I've kind of based who I am on who I was in the past um, without actually kind of seeing who I want to become. And so I think that's kind of held me back. So it's, I actually really love that quote. I love, I know I've heard you say it a bunch of times, 
throughout yeah. the different meetings, but I love hearing it every time. I think it's really truthful and powerful. Very cool. Thanks, Anthony. Good to see you. Good to see you. Yeah. Dan in Canada. I like how you just put that in your name, Dan. <laughs> Dan from Canada. Dan, good to see you. So what would you say is a, a win and a challenge around your self-reliance? My wife has been very um, blamey, I guess, if, if, that's a, if that's a word. And I've been working on not getting so defensive. I, I catch myself being defensive at times, but in the last few days, you know, I, I think I shared it with you in the email there that she uh, told me that she didn't love me or that she loved me, but she couldn't feel love for me. So normally I would go defend or try to say, well, what about this? What about that? And I just basically said, paused and said, you know what? That makes me sad. And that's basically all I said. And then, you know, we just carried on. And then, you know, this morning we had some some more interaction. I, I, I tend to go in the logic, like she's very heart centric and I'm very logic oriented. That's my safe zone is I go logic. And so I wanted to know more why she left. Oh yeah, see, she left the bed, left the bed. And as she was leaving, she said... Oh, I was going to say, I love you, but I think that would be weird. So she just walked away. So I didn't know what that meant. So later, a few minutes later, I walked in the, in the bathroom and said, well, can you tell me more about that? And he says, you know what? I'm, I got to get to my meeting. I can't talk right now. So anyway, so that's kind of what I've been working on is the just working on being more curious than defensive so and, and i feel what i imagine is happening for her is because of her trauma and in her past and because of her sexual abuse there's been there's it's there's a lot of a lot going on over there so the fact that you know i i feel i'm providing a lot of love and the, the fact that she can't feel the love you know and we we're just going to be 35 years married here and end of the month so um I, I do feel I, I take some responsibility of being complacent along the way. So now this over the last couple of years, we've been both working on ourselves, so which has been great. Not only I've been working, she's been working. So we're, we're working through it. Um, so, so yeah, so I guess the, the win is I'm slowly taking a deep breath and, and making sure that I don't get my normal reaction is to get defensive is to take a breather pause and then you know and if there's curiosity there or if i if i want to know, know more i ask that and otherwise i don't say anything and let her be with her feelings so i feel that that's been working very well and then lastly uh this tonight i i'm doing some more training on a different career path and we'll chat about that tomorrow but i learned that you know i'm trying to be free with my roofing business i don't feel like i'm free the fact is I am free. I'm just choosing to do what I'm doing. So when I mentioned that to her, it's, hey, this is what I learned today that I'm, we're actually free and we're just, we're, you know, unless you're in a third world country or in prison or something, you're not free, but I'm actually free to do whatever I want. And <clears throat> the fact that like, I'm looking for financial freedom, <coughs> um, she mentioned to me that, oh, that really resonates with me. I, I've never felt, she goes, I never felt I've had the freedom to make choices in life. And I go, oh, we need to chat about that. So we're going to chat about that tonight. But so anyway, so that's kind yeah. of a nutshell there. Yeah, thank you, Dan. I, you know, you wrote to me about being confused about this. And I feel that in you right now. And I appreciate you bringing that here to us. Uh, you're doing amazing stuff, being there for her, holding space, which was a conversation on the another forum of what's holding space mean and it means to be there with with her in curiosity without judgment to feel it within your own self but to not collapse you're not there to be blown over by her storm or upset by her emotions but to be there and breathe them through and let them let's say go out of you as best possible that in and of itself mm. is, is care for her that in and of itself is loving to her and she does feel love through that whether she says that directly or not because of all the pains like you said uh, mm. I, if I were you I mean I would find an opportunity to honestly praise her for sharing such painful things with you that she maybe had said was it last night and this morning yeah like mm -hmm. hey you know this may be so difficult to talk about and I appreciate you being honest with me and opening to me thank you no matter how much you share with me no matter 
how little or small or how shallow or deep, you know, thank you, you might say to her, even if your mm -hmm. heart is aching, and even if you wish you could just, you know, fix it and take away her pain, the best that you can do is, are these things that you're learning and that you're practicing. So even this evening, there's, there's nothing to necessarily fix. It's about being there for her and her expressing, you know, this, that she never felt like she had freedom or choice in her life. And that, that's a mm -hmm. like sad thing. That sounds like a painful thing. Yeah, no, I, 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 and I do, I do feel it from time to time. So I'm, I'm slowly finding out now that it's not about me. It's, it's what's happening there. So the defending all, <laughs> Uh, I'm tired of doing that anyways, like, yeah. trying to defend when she blames me. I go, well, okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of deflecting it now. I kind of, oh, okay, it's more over there versus being over here. So, so that's a freeing moment. It's just, it, it's been challenging at times. It just comes back and uh, it just grips me. And then I go, oh, okay, let her go. Let it go. Yeah. But, um, anyways, yeah. You're yeah. doing good work, Dan. Good stuff. Thanks for being here. Yeah. Thank you. Absolutely. You're welcome. So yeah, there was, there was men in the chat supporting you as well, Dan, like that they've heard similar things and question in the chat. Is it appropriate to say anything for an anniversary if the separation is still fresh and new? Chris said, got a blank card for that and wrote a playful, authentic sentence of truth to my wife, our anniversary in, on Thursday. I've only been separated since March, left the house in January, but seeing her every day. That's a great question. That's a good response, Chris, certainly. Generally, I say you do want to acknowledge the day. And that's not for you necessarily. It's not for her necessarily. It's for the relationship. So being separated, you're still in a relationship. And you don't, what you write or what you offer her, it's, you don't want it to be about the future. Like, I'm looking forward to our future together. I'm looking forward to going to Europe with you in 10 years from now. You don't want to talk necessarily about the future. It'll seem assumptive to her and daft, like you're unaware of the situation. But acknowledging something that's true to you, like maybe acknowledging the, the children that you brought into life or Anthony for you, acknowledging the experience that you, the two of you had or that it opened you to adventure in the world, let's say, if that's something that's true to you. So acknowledging something beautiful that you experienced together from the past, not that uh, it's because of her, but an acknowledgement of gratitude in the world. So. Yeah, just real quick, just... To be fully transparent, literally what I said in the card was something like, not future tense at all. I was just like, uh, she, I always tell her that she, her spirit animal is a cat. So I basically was like, if I was a cat like you and had nine lives, I would have chosen you all nine times. That's all I said in the card. What do you think? <laughs> I'm not here to give you the hallmark critique. We can <laughs> talk about that another time. I'd be like, yeah, I appreciate you jumping in. So I'll share this. And then we'll we'll be done for this evening. This is the very first chapter of the very first part of the book, Way of the Superior Man by David Data. Stop hoping for a completion of anything in life. Most men make the error of thinking that one day it will be done. They think if I can work enough, then one day I could rest. Or one day my woman will understand something and then she will stop complaining. Or I'm only doing this now so that one day I can do what I really want in my life. The masculine error is to think that eventually things will be different in some fundamental way. They won't. It never ends. As long as life continues, the creative challenge is to tussle, play, and make love with the present moment while giving your unique gift. And I'll add to that, that it's not that this painful, stressful, separated time will persist forever. That's not what it means. It means that the feminine within all of us, to Joe's point, is going to seek love and connection and relationship. And the masculine part of all of us, including in women, is going to seek freedom and accomplishment and tasks in the world. And being aware of how we can lead her, how we can heal her, that's what we're learning here. Being aware of our own self, leading our own self, having self-reliance in the world, and not expecting her to act like a man, not expecting her to just get our logic and believe us and speaking from our mind, that's not going to work with a woman. So stop hoping that she's going to be more like a man. Right? Stop hoping that you're striving for your own self, your purpose, your passion is going to end because you as a man and I as a man, we're always going to want to be striving in that way, no matter what, whether we're retired or have millions of dollars in the bank or otherwise, we're still going to want to seek passion. We're still going to want to seek purpose. At least I will right up until they put me in the dirt. Appreciate you guys being here. Have a good night, guys. See you next week.